the, the Comedy Cellar uh, live stream. I have Dan Natterman and Ronan Hirschberg. Oh, you were, you gave it a real I, Jewish lilt. You're like Hirschberg. Well, after you said all the fucking, you were like before this. You got you got all like you got all Jewy on me. It's and like I, when people pronounce it mozzarella with the Italian accent. You're like Ronan Hirschberg. Well, <laughs> well, I look I look Jewish, but I am Italian. So I part of mm. me was just trying to assimilate with what we have right now. It worked well, yeah. Um, you guys doing okay? Hi, happy pandemic. Happy pandemic. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Yes, you're hanging. Are you doing? Are you guys? I. Uh, run on i saw you at a park show but dan are you doing anything? yeah i just did one um when when did i do it i think it was monday or tuesday it was well First whatever time. it was um no i've done a few of the stand-up new york shows in the sheep meadow there by the oak tree they're yeah. fun it's such a weird it's such a <laughs> there by the, the oak way, tree <laughs> i know but the way you say it it sounds like a fairy tale it where sounds you're like, like yeah i went to go <laughs> meet my grandmother the, in the woods if the clip were in the oak tree itself <laughs> interesting but um it sounds like uh tim uh, tim robbins where he's telling morgan freeman where to find the uh oh right the, the uh, thing the at money. the end of shawshank go up to that tree and dig under the ground and you'll find a show a comedy show where, <laughs> where people um, mildly enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> i actually think it's right. really fun yeah i think they do enjoy it um i think uh because they have no other choices let's okay. be honest well yes that's part of it Everybody's watched everything on Netflix. That's just a fact. Uh, Netflix has been saturated or satiated. We've been satiated. satiated but it is yes. oversaturated too. It's also so. oversaturated with junk. But yeah, I mean, I've I've done a, I've done them for like a month now, and you know, there's it just like any show. There's going to be some ones that are like not great, but for the most part, I'm like after months of doing nothing. I've really lowered my expectations uh, of what I'm expecting from an audience, especially just, outside. Yeah. Or just life in general at this point. It's all just been oh, sort of lowered. Oh, yeah. Um, I think they've been good, though. I think whatever awkwardness about with not having the walls and the ceiling and the, and the floor, I guess all of those, <laughs> whatever awkwardness of not having that is balanced out but by the desperate, desperate suicidal need of the audience to enjoy themselves. Yeah. So it kind of becomes like a kind of it kind of honestly balances out perfectly to me. I um I I tend to find that I I I tend to err on the side of non edgy or material because first of all that sounds not that good so I prefer to do sh shorter jokes. Yeah. And I find that well my limited experience I've only done a few is that um the edgier stuff that might kill at the comedy cellar in a park crowd seems to be less effective. Hard to be edgy in the park. Yeah, I think it's hard to be edgy in the park. And also there's kids sometimes yeah. like nearby. Oh, yeah. they're, not, they're running around, the kid literally hanging on the tree. You um, know, oh, like, I'm cursing. Monkey. I'm cursing at children. Yeah, like, I, I, like I almost like direct <laughs> my curse words to like babies. I, <laughs> I'm, I just, I don't know how to not be myself. And I've always had a problem with the fact that like I'm a club comic that like, People are like, do you want to do this charity? I'm like, how about you watch my stuff and then you ask me again if I want to do your charity? Like, I'm happy right. to give back, but I don't know if I'm going to help you raise money with my personality. Like, I don't know. I, my thing is, is that like, especially in New York City, you can't protect your kids on the subway or around. People are always cursing and being themselves. This isn't a small town, so I'm not going to stop just because I think this is the time to curse. Things well, I got, yeah, I got, right when I went on, I was gonna say stage. Right when I went on grass today, these six-year-olds like sat down right oh, as I went on stage. It was like a, it was like a gang of them. It was like a little like a little rascals group, and they sat right to the left of me. And I just did my material. It was fine, though. It did feel like I felt like I was committing a crime because I was like, you know, I try to talk to people close to me, so I'm like, you know, this girl sent me a nude. Have you ever gone in a nude before? And then I'm like, wait, I can't ask you that. Now it feels like I'm going to get arrested, you know? So yeah. it does get a little, like, tricky. Um, but overall, you know, I also think the world's ending, so who gives a shit? Yeah, there's no... There's well, I hope you're wrong about that, but uh, it could be. Could be. Or, or just, be, you know, I don't know. I, I, I guess I, I do agree that it's hard to be edgy in the park. But at the same time, it's also hard not to be a little dark right now. If you, cause it, uh, even if you're trying to be as clean as possible, you're going to talk about COVID on some yeah. level. Yeah. And that's a little dark. So it's kind of like everyone's become a I little have three, dark. I only have three COVID jokes. 
Then I started. Yeah. You don't jokes. need more than three COVID jokes. I, yeah, At some point, people want to. The, the other comics didn't have that many COVID jokes either, so I figured. I was sort of going by what they were doing, and 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 most people just do a couple of COVID jokes out the gate, and then they go to their non-COVID material. So, I think, yeah, I think that's, that's my observation. Whether it be, I've also done a couple of shows at the Stand, which have been very good. Those are the best shows I think in the city. Yeah, they do. They really make it feel like a club there. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, um, I only did two. But um, let's promote all the clubs on this. All yeah, the yeah, clubs yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the then seller, I they got the live stream. The seller doesn't doing it. Uh, the seller's not doing any shows though. They're, but they're serving food to the public. They're serving food. They're not doing sure. shows. So what else are you guys doing? Like what well, else other than shows? How are you getting through your lives now that we don't travel or have experiences? Well, you brought up Netflix. I wanted to. I wanted to mention Cobra Kai briefly. Yeah, please. Because it's a show that I've been watching on Netflix, and I'm and I'm enjoying it from the nostalgia. But I was wondering, and Liz, you're younger. I don't know if you're quite a millennial, but you're of a younger generation. I'm also uh, young. I mean, if you're gonna say she's young. Oh yeah, I'm Ron and Hershberg is young. I'm, I'm an old. I'm an older millennial. I'm like almost at the cutoff. I feel I'm like a, me and Liz are the same age, probably around. I'm well, 35. What are you? Uh, I'm 36, but I just turned. Oh, that's that's yeah. millennial-ish, I think. So yeah, no, we're like we're like right at the cutoff. So like we like we grew up without the internet and with the internet and without phones and with, with phones. phones, like we're like, like well, that's, that's with hope and right. without hope, we, we yeah, saw yes. both sides. Thank but the question much. is, is since you, you weren't teenagers when the Karate Kid came out, uh, you weren't even born, I guess, or you were just born when the Karate Kid It was came what, what mid eighties? 85 ish, 86 ish. I was born was, 85. But, yeah. but there was a sequels too though, you know? Yeah, there were the yeah. sequels, but you were a kid. And then so. the Will Smith version. Yeah. Uh, Wait, yeah well, no, not Will Smith. His son. Uh, what's his, his son? Whatever Smith version. Jane. 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 Did Jane he turn into a girl? Did they transition? Well, uh, he might have done. I don't know. But I but my, know. My, <laughs> my my question is is other than the nostalgia value, is Cobra Kai any good? I I I can't tell because I'm sort of steeped in the nostalgia of seeing all the old Karate Kid characters and references. But would somebody that has no familiarity with Karate Kid find it remotely interesting? My my roommate yeah. actually gave me like a real great breakdown where he said that it really kind of flipped the um, the dynamic. Like the guy that was the bully is now like the good guy, from what I understand. And like it kind of just it uses tropes in a different way, and it kind of took it to the next level, which I actually appreciate. When the same way that like I grew up watching Jumanji with Robin Williams, and when they made the Kevin Hart and the Rock version, which is Jumanji, amazing, by the way, it's great. It's absolutely the 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 first one they made. The second one is like they kind of. Uh, but the first one is like. Is but the first like, one, they took something they they made it funny. It was thoughtful while also being more relatable to what's going on right now, but also unique and staying true to the concept of it. And so that's where like, that's a very fine line to like both respect where it came from while also making it modern and reinventing it and giving it su substance. I have not seen it, Dan, but I'm sure it's awful. Have, have you, have you, are you familiar <laughs> with the Karate Kid franchise? Yeah, of course. I mean, we, I mean, you know, you gotta remember, even if we were born when the first one came out, yeah. movies still... movies that were a couple of years earlier are still the movies you grew up with. You know what I mean? Like, right. but I don't think it has the same, I could be wrong, but I don't think it has quite the same meaning for you. I mean, when I saw Karate Kid, it was with friends, you know, as a teenager. Yeah. I mean, that's got a special resonance as but, opposed to you seeing it years later, you know. But this uh, is a new thing, right? This is a new movie. Yeah, but it's based on the Karate Kid. So what the, the question is, is I have such fond feelings for the Karate Kid movies because it came out when I was a teenager that that uh, overflows onto the Cobra, allows me to enjoy the Cobra Kai just because it's nostalgia, but I was just wondering if other people enjoy it too. It's funny, I have the opposite thing. I'll like love a movie as a kid and I'll watch it again. I'll be like, this is awful. And I'll feel this like emptiness. Usually like my childhood awful. was a lie, but it's nice that you go the other way. You're so nostalgic, you even like but the also remakes. it's different. Now the Karate Kid probably was crap, but but it still has nostalgia. But it was yeah. your crap. My it was crap. the crap that I'll got you I'll through you not to insult your adolescence. And that crap um, is really important. Yeah. It is, you know. And I, although I, I am I, getting a little tired of 80s new wave music, but. Um, 80s is like the only music, like I love pretty much every genre. 80s is the only music they overplayed it so much. And I just thought it was not great to begin with that I just can't stand it. I think the 80s is bad in a lot of ways. Like I truly think, I mean, you might all get mad at me right now, but it's, which I think will prove my point. I think 80s comedies are all usually overrated. And that's all purely nostalgic factor, the movies. 
of the movies. Uh, well, yeah. name a few that and you that completely uh, Better Off Dead still stands up. I, I mean, no, 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 don't get me wrong. There's a couple that stand up, but like Animal House, Caddyshack, these movies suck. Those it's are all 70s. Nostalgia. I'm well, pretty sure those are 70s. Uh, yes, I, well, Caddyshack might have been 1980. Yeah. Um, yeah, 1980. Animal House was, I believe, the Cat, Caddyshack was 1980. Animal House, I think, was like 79 or something. Fletch like and 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 every movie was John. Can They're just not that funny. And I and I and uh, I thought and Vacation I just, was really funny. I mean, again, and I think Caddyshack and Vacation are still funny. I'd have to see them, but but people uh, nostalgia or have such a nostalgic reaction. Yeah, nostalgia is 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 a factor, but I do think I do think uh, Vacation was funny. I think that. Um, Caddyshack was funny. I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, every time people tell me you got to watch this 80s comedy, I watch it and then I'm like, this but what sucks. about 80? What about 80s stand up compared yeah. to stand up more well, modern? This is a little awkward. Aren't you part of that too? I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, joking. I'm not 80s stand up. I'm joking. I'm sorry. I'm joking. What um, year did you start, Dan? No, I started in 93, but you, you might say I uh, came of age in the early 2000s as a comedian or that I, yeah. It might strike whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I don't know if you characterize me as a '90s comedian because you wouldn't characterize Seinfeld as a '70s comedian, even though he started in the '70s. No, but he was an made '80s name for himself. He yeah. blew up. I, whatever name that I was going to make for myself, I made in the 2000s. You're a 2000s yeah. comedian, but that's a weird. Yeah, I guess it's a weird thing to see. Yeah, be an arts, an arts comedian. I don't but, know. But that means I'm not any comedian because I haven't made. Well, it, I, or so you I have could, to. I gotta. I gotta you, say, two, I'm a 2030s comedian. I hope. Or you could just designate uh, designate it by when a comedian became famous. In which case, I'm a I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a nothing comedian. <laughs> we have no decades to attach. I have to. no decade, but um. Yeah, so so uh, any thoughts on 80s stand up? I don't, I don't think yeah. I don't think I grew up with it. Like it's not the same as music where they like eventually they stopped playing it. So like I grew up watching Paula Poundstone, uh, Sinbad. Like I was more 90s. Like um, I'm trying to think, you know, and then of course like there's the greats, there's the George Carlins and the Richard Pryors and blah blah what, blah. Yeah, what's 80s? Like Richard Lewis or Richard uh, well Seinfeld is that's when he became uh, known as a stand up up uh, um dice i guess you know at the end of the 80s oh yeah dice. dice clay i mean then no um <laughs> well, I, feel, no. I feel like a lot of stand-up in general just doesn't hold up there's uh, no there's no women and it's just kind of do well the roseanne uh was yeah, oh roseanne. i did like roseanne there was i don't one think woman, i watched her stand-up uh, there was one racist woman no um <laughs> no she was just poor she grew into her racism <laughs> uh and Jewish. She was a lot of things. Was she I Jewish? That, Is she yeah. Jewish? Yeah. What well, one thing I've always said Some Jews can be poor, Liz. Oh, I thought I just didn't <laughs> I didn't joking. know they could be as, I'm joking. I didn't know they could I thought they would just be a whole package when they got rich. Right. Well, no, one no, thing no. about stand up in the eighties, it seems to me, and even maybe in the nineties, when I first started to go into the comedy cellar in there's a point I brought up before, but when I started going to the comedy cellar in the nineties. Nobody was there. Nobody there was really over 42 or 43 years old. And he, even I'm not even sure anybody was that old of the of the comedians that were performing regularly. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I, 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 because everybody was by that age. They I don't know. They were out in Hollywood. They were I don't know where they were, but they weren't there. Now, if you look at the Comedy Cellar uh, list. 50s, um, 60s. You, I mean, if you really look at 60s, I would say the bulk of people are between like 40 and 55 is like 90 percent of the comics but when did the seller start like started about 83 but the thing is is like oh, everybody that was there when in like night in like in like the year 2000 a lot of them are still there but it sounds like a lot of them are dead as well so it sounds dead. many it sounds like there wasn't was there really when you start when in that 80s or 90s was there that many old comics working at the cellar so, but I'm saying there were not. Now, why not? Because I think part of it is that there were just less of them. In yeah. Existence. And I think part of it is that by the time they were that age, they were in Hollywood doing but, bigger things. But there's also no old comics at the cellar. Had a, like, like basically the club start with the younger people and then they get older and the club is like, you know, continues working them, right? So there's not as many. Oh, no, I think the club. You either made an opportunity, did the road, or you quit. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think. You either got out of the business or you were a big shot and you weren't at the comedy cellar. Do you think like, because there was more of a, was there a comedy boom that, that allowed people to be- more people in the business and less, and it's glutted and less people are 
making it, quote unquote. No, well, but also smaller there's, percentage, there's a smaller percentage of people. And no one's leaving. No one's leaving. No one's They're leaving. All just staying. No, but you also <laughs> have to look at there's different. So there used to be just like one or two opportunities. You either like Seinfeld did it or you kind of Sinbad it. Like you're either in the movies in a stand-up or you're on TV and you're a stand-up. Well, now you can have a YouTube channel, you can have a podcast. Like if, if just doing stand-up is what makes you happy, you can make money either touring or doing some kind of other weird side project that makes money. Like you don't even need the industry. You don't ever yeah. have to go to LA. And because late night moved to New York, there are more and more opportunities in the last, what, five years since Jimmy Fallon got late night. Like as soon as more late night shows like were in New York, all of a sudden more and more opportunities started to be here. So you didn't actually have to go to LA to kind of make it. Oh, that might be it, you know, and, and, and you're right. You're right about the fact that people are, people are making it in a different way. And they're, they're not necessarily becoming billionaires like Seinfeld did or like Romano did uh, or, or half a, half a billionaires. But there's a lot yeah, of, but, but there, but there a lot people a... making very good money. Uh, doing, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> podcasting or touring. Or... There's a lot of unassuming rich comics now. There's a lot yeah, of comics you... no one's ever heard of that are rich. Yeah. But you can't be a billionaire like them anymore. You can't get syndication. If you get even, because of Netflix and all the streaming networks, you get a buyout now. You actually have to take a risk of, do I'm, am I going to take a buyout or am I going to take some kind of share thing? So the likelihood of ever actually becoming, just like we'll never have, a Michael Jackson level of fame because there was only three channels when he mm -hmm. became famous. We're never gonna have somebody that becomes a billionaire like Seinfeld and Romano because you can't get syndication the way the Cosby show did or the way Ray Romano's. Which uh, makes you, yeah, which makes you worry like that comedy doesn't have as much a cultural impact if there's not as much of a collective. I don't think that's true. What you actually have is more opportunity and more inclusion because you can't, like before it was like, I'm NBC. I decided, you know, this comedian has value and this person's going to become famous. Now I, as somebody that, you know, who knows if you like my style, you like what I talk about, what have you, I have my own fan base with very limited you know, um, access to Hollywood and agents and stuff like that. But now I can talk about whatever I want to talk about and I don't have to be on TV to make a living. So now you have people that maybe just talk about um, uh, being cats. transgender. What, say it again? Cats. Yeah, I do talk about cats a lot and that is part of me. But like you can have somebody that is Muslim American and they talk about being Muslim and there might be a whole group of people that are like, I don't want to see that. But then you have a whole group of people that are like, that voice is, I've never seen a Muslim comedian, comedian talk about their story or a transgender comedian. Right. And not even just their story. I don't want to put them in a box like that's all they're allowed to talk about. But we have to face the facts that a lot of this is a casting call. And it used to just be like white males and maybe one white woman and occasionally some black guys. And now you can actually have a diversity of both faces, styles, and um, uh, uh, what you talk about and and that's what I think is the benefit of the fact that you don't need to just be on these four major networks to actually have a career. Which begs the question, are me and Dan white? What do you think? I mean, this is the thing is that like, don't you feel like the rules are a little different in comedy where I actually think black guys have the most um, kind of power in the comedy, in the comedy spectrum. They're always assumed both in a comedy club and in auditions to be the funniest people. Then you have white guys, which is you kind of just have to prove. They don't, they once you show them yourself, they decide. So it's like yeah. black guys are plus one, white guys are zero, we'll decide. And then women are always negative one. So it's, it's you have well, to kind of, I mean, it's getting, it's getting better, but it's still, I mean, every single YouTube, every single thing has at least 50 comments that say women. But I'm saying, am I white? Because I'm Jewish and I, my name sounds a little Muslim-y. So I feel like I'm in the middle there. Well, I think you're white for purposes of show business. And also- Because the Jew is white in show business. But also it depends if you were, if you were a casting call in the sense that you were going to play a character, you actually can be ethnically ambiguous and you can be a bunch of different stuff. Like yeah, I, I look can, like Armenian or something, right? I mean, I can be just about anything. Like I get Latina a lot. I, you know what I mean? I could be great. I know. You know, that's the funny thing about Italians. Italians really, it's funny that Italian this is going to be problematic and whatever, but here we go. It's funny that Italians kind of people treat them like they're white now because Italians look just as ethnic as any other fucking group. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I get, I mean, Italian I, get, I see looks Muslim or Latino or, you know. My best friend's Egyptian and we literally, we look exactly the same. I feel like <laughs> Italians should go back into being, um, well, you know what's the problem is they're so racist, they took away the minority stats. Yeah, that's really, that's always been <laughs> the problem like, is the racism. Italians but are the most racist. Which but is like, because there's so many Jewish comedians, I mean, this is where you have leverage. There's other, there's other Jewish people that are helping you out. It's, that's why it's kind of important to have more minorities in a position of power because then they help other people that are a minority and we kind of make it so this uh, is- I, I'm not convinced that Jews necessarily help out other Jews. I'm sure it happens. People have that help out their friends. We're a cutthroat the, group. The, we don't help people To the out. extent that your friends are more likely to be Jewish, maybe. But for example, Seinfeld, you know, he, uh, I mean- Hasn't he, helped me out once. Well, he hasn't he helped out me once. He, he helped out Tom Papa, you know. Um, who's not Jewish. Who's not Jewish. And- um, I mean, Jews like to help I mean, out he, 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 <laughs> he created the show at Larry David. Yeah, he, they created it together, right. But they were but, buddies. But they, Yeah, that's know, where they, friendship they, comes from. Right, so if the, to the extent that people are friends with other people of their ethnic group, Okay, that that can be helpful, no, but I, I guess, don't. I don't. I, guess, I don't think the Jews but, seek. But people seek relate. Other but Jews to help necessarily. I guess no, all the help I've gotten from is Sam Morrill, who is Jewish. Yeah, yeah. So but what I'm, I'm saying correct. is, I'll be honest. If I watch a female comic and they talk about something I relate to, I'm gonna have a positive experience with them. I see Carmen Lagala; she makes me laugh. When somebody goes, "Hey, is there another female comic you recommend?" I'm gonna say Carmen Lagala because she. You know what I mean? Is there another? Com I might mention Carmen first because she made me laugh because we relate to each other so that's the biggest issue is you're a dude maybe there's another dude that has had similar experiences or is talking about something that's relatable you go i think that's funny you recommend him so it's the same idea that if everybody's just recommending people that they find funny which oftentimes is limited to experiences and what have you then it just it's just more male dudes or just straight dudes or just whatever and now we're having people with like I said, different religions, different backgrounds, you know, different genders, different whatever, because the more people in position of power can relate to them and then they spread it out. To you know what people. stays the same is hot. It used to be like hot white guys, now it's just hot other minorities. The hot stays the same. Show yeah, me. but but the nice thing about comedy I always thought is like you can it's if you're hot, it helps, but if you're not, you can still work. Stand up yeah. comics, they want you to be funny. They're you're not you know what I mean? Unless you're starting an OnlyFans, nobody really cares what you look like. Like, yeah. You know, I well, I think in Hollywood that it, you know, it, as far as but you don't need concerned. Hollywood anymore. I can have a podcast. You, you don't need Hollywood. Um, I think Joe Rogan a, this shit. You know, but Joe Rogan got got a boost from Hollywood. That's how he became famous yeah. initially. It's and then true. He, he did a lot of. He actually he's actually fairly. Like, people forget that. Like he was fairly uh, like he was the main character on a big sh on, like three different shows. Like yeah. Man show, news radio, and you know it certainly can help you get get the initial fame, and then you can launch your podcast. Some people and you can tell people not to vote for Biden to seven million. Yeah, I know. I I was watching some clips, and I was like, this makes that, me uh, so angry. He sucks. Who it just, are we talking about? Because I, I yeah yeah uh, he just like you know he can be very like what I appreciate about him is that he clearly gives a platform for a multitude of perspectives, but then I, I think he also just. He has a lot of power. He can also put just as easily false facts out there and just be a spreader of misinformation. I mean, he does. He had like Alex Jones on and he was not really very hard on him. I don't know. It's just like, yeah. um, you know, he's. I do think he's a bit of a conspiracy theorist and, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I guess it's his right to like do say whatever he wants, but- Of course, I mean, he, he has completely created just like InfoWars, just like yeah. some of these other platforms, they've insulated themselves that you can't cancel something that doesn't need anybody else. Right, right. Even if you take away a Spotify contract, he's fine. He doesn't need, you can't cancel him. I'm just curious what he said about Biden. I didn't hear this. He just said I, at one point, he just said like, you know, Biden's an insult to the Republic, uh, Democrats. I'm, I'd rather vote for Trump over Biden, you know? Which is like, you're just kind of every- It's, it's just being contrarian, but it's like kind of dangerous. I feel it's like. super dangerous yeah. because everybody felt that way about Hillary and they were just like, it's not nearly as bad as, it can't be any worse. And we're like, well, now we have proof that it is. And then people are still being like, well, it's, it's anything. Uh, like, I'm just can't do Trump. But I'll I also don't I'm pleasantly, Trump, I'm pleasantly surprised with Trump. I thought it'd be worse. I, I mean, I thought- no, <laughs> There's no way. You, 
<laughs> I thought it was going to be horrible, and it was. No, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> we're we're talking on worse. Zoom, Dad. I know. What do you mean it could have been worse? We literally don't have a career. Yeah, I know, but you know what? We are what? fucked for probably another year. If um, and maybe even more if all the comedy well, clubs that, don't get that, funding. That, well, the two points. That's recent. So, but well, I was pleasantly surprised at least until this year. And the second point is, is I don't know if comedians in you know France or uh, other places are doing much better. So uh, whether if like the yes. question is, if Hillary had been in office, would we be sitting here on Zoom? And the answer is, I don't know. We would have always had a pandemic. It affected everybody around the world, but. Uh, comedians in the UK are back to doing shows, um, even in. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think you can just. I know we'll never know for sure, but I think you could just imagine if the president wasn't someone who was openly against masks for most of it, and masks. If eighty percent of people wear masks, it like but a lot down. of people were against masks at the very beginning. Even but he was against you know, it. He was against it the for, whole time up uh, until it started to affect his poll numbers. My whole thing is is that they, she would have read the documents. Like they were talking about this in November. In November, they were talking about it. Nobody, no, but, but in, even in Europe, they, they weren't doing anything until I guess February-ish. So, so yeah, what, we, what could have happened is that, is that we would have had, New York City would have been an epicenter just like any other country, but the rest of the country could have been okay we would have gotten I mean, a lot less better. people would have a lot less people would have died. A lot, no, lot less little people would have died. Probably, but I don't know what it's hard, hard to, to say, say where precisely we would be. I know France is going like I think, but but Dan, I do, up and then they went back. You know, they but I do it. agree. But they didn't all open up all at once. But I do agree with you, Dan, that Trump, like definitely, what I thought would happen immediately took like three years to happen. But it did. It did eventually get there. Um, and we're like gonna, we're I do feel think the when damage you, for for. For a decade, mostly the what happened with Trump for the first few years is just everybody being stressed out and on edge. But um, the economy was fine, and you know, they were not. There, I mean, it, it didn't. My my day to day life, if I didn't know any better, I would say there's nothing weird. There's going there's on. people rioting in the streets. No, now, of, yeah, now, <laughs> now there are. Yes, now there are. Well, it's kind of like at the RNC with like. But you're basically saying it didn't get bad until it got bad. But yeah, that's how that's bad, how shit yeah. that's how shit works. Like well, it's, it's kind of like the, yeah, it's kind of like. The I also shit. don't know that the rioting. How much is that to do with Trump? Big cops are not. But but they even said he he like basically t let racists like even in the '60s they wore hoods. Like he emboldened racists to just be their best but, racist self. But these like, cops, these best, cops, but as a racist, these, these cops that committed these shootings weren't committing shootings because the Trump is was in office. Absolutely. No, but Trump but also that's not... like openly speaks about how they should do whatever they want. And he openly says like, yeah. he openly incites police. Okay. I mean, police has always been a problem, but the riots are definitely like, Trump has definitely like tried to divide the country as much as possible. I mean, that's his whole thing. Well, I mean, we'll see if, if, if Trump gets voted out, uh, how much things calm down, you know, under Biden. I'm, I, I don't know. Yeah, but that's not even fair to Biden because he just spent four years, five years, really, yeah, it's piling up and yeah. being like, hey, racist, you're right. Go I mean, Dan, Trump, Trump literally said that kid who shot those two people, Trump literally like, said it was a good thing and retweeted well, someone saying. About, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. Well, I, think yeah, he I, mean, he, I don't think he said it was a good thing. I think he said the kid could have been killed. And if you watch the video, I don't think he should be weighing in on a case that is not going. He to shouldn't be weighing in. And, and Peter, by the way, should uh, I think Senator Ken one of the Kennedys said that the kid committed yeah, but, murder, but which he is came also there, weighing in. He came I in there with a gun. Weigh in. Yeah, but he like he, if you watch the like, video, it looks clear that he was running away. I think you have to let let the court run. But its Trump, course. but Trump is obviously not doing that. No, he should have let it run its course. But and but Biden has openly be, said like Biden has openly said like. Violence on both sides is bad. Biden is obviously at least attempting what has been for a while, the presidential duty of trying to calm the mob, which Trump clearly does not do. He goes out of his way to not calm no, the he, mob. No, uh, Trump raises the temperature, absolutely. Uh, you know. So that's, um, I mean, I think that, you know, it's hard to say the right cause. Raises but, the temperature. He's handing people gasoline. He's yeah. literally giving get free gasoline. Well, to he, he has done that, but so has on the other side. I mean, I don't want to, I know be accused of whataboutism. I'm not, I'm saying that if you look at the other side, as soon as a cop shoots somebody and somebody like Kamala says, or as, as soon as Jesse Smollett 
you know, came forward with, with his thing and, and Kamala said, this is a lynching or, or Biden says uh, another black man's been murdered. This is raising the temperature because we don't know yet whether it's a racist killing until it's been fully investigated. Well, uh, I mean, you know, is, is Biden a nicer guy than Trump? I think so. Trump is amoral, anti-intellectual. And, I, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not going to defend him. I But I do think that um, raising that there's been a raising of the temperature on both sides. But, but there's a difference between creating awareness and showing that change needs to happen and somebody that's going, hey, guys, keep keep doing the fucking crazy batshit stuff that you're doing. Like, I, I mean, just but, but, yeah, like Sorry. Black Lives Matter doesn't even come close to people just shooting up buildings and, sh and willy nilly shooting people or the fact that cops even with cameras on, still never get trialed, almost never get, they, half the time they don't even get fired, let alone um, prosecuted. So it's just, I just don't think the comparison is fair. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, you know, so much now is talking about how like Republicans are afraid and everything's so dangerous, but like all that's happened lately is a cop shot a guy seven times and then a kid shot two protesters. So it seems like, the other side is getting killed during this. You yeah, why I mean? are you scared? What are you scared about? I mean, there's obviously looting, and that's gonna, and that you know, that is a result of like, yeah, but that is a result, a natural lives. result. You're losing your target. Who yeah. gives a shit? It's a natural like, result of uh, of of this. It's not to say it's good. It's just a natural result of what's happening. And I do think the Republicans have yelled so much about law and order and looting that they've made people separate the root of the looting. People forget to act like remember that, oh, this looting is caused because the cops are shooting black people with Sorry, impunity. what did you just you spray know? on yourself, Dan? I, I have- um, It was uh, an anti-liberal spray. He sprayed it on his face kid. so he couldn't hear our- <laughs> Facial spray with aloe herbs and rose water. Oh, I do that too. I have like a little aloe spray. It's very refreshing. I, I forgot who gave it to me. I think Kate Herman gave it. You know her? She's a- I don't think so. And whatever. Anyway, she's a but comic. I, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm trying to get- me. I forgot who, but- I'm yeah. trying to get less emotional. I, I, I started yelling at my roommate about this stuff. So I'm trying to be like more calm because I feel like I do, I can't fall into that liberal parody of being angry if someone has just like a different point of view, you know? I don't think you need to be angry, but it's also not fair that like you present facts and they present garbage. And you're just yeah. like, you can't win if, you know what I mean? It'd be like if I wrote a book report and I like, went to the library and researched and talked to like experts and did all this yeah. stuff. And then you fucking like literally got something from Wikipedia well, and, then yeah. presented it, and then I'm the one that's going and they're like, see, you both wrote a book report. No, no, I did six weeks of research. You pulled a little paragraph from Wikipedia and you're yeah, trying to and it's, it, Yeah, and there's definitely is the, the you, you can find faults with anything. And there are moments where liberals have have raised the temperature it's true but when you look yeah. at when you look at overall who is raising the temperature like who is really taking to a whole new level trump is taking it to this whole new level where it's not you can't just say both sides anymore you know what i mean at this point it really is like someone trying to destroy the country and um and yeah i mean there is problems with liberals too but i think you know i think um yeah there are problems on both sides but it's like way magnified on way, way big of a problem on the other side are you voting for trump no i, I i'm a grab casting a regret well look anything could happen between now and november i mean if 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 biden dies and we're left with Kam kamala and and she picks we're left with Miami. a woman you know i might have an object no but uh <laughs> you and really she, and then she picks a vice president that i'm saying there's there's who knows what can happen between now and november I, i'm not I'm I'm gonna likely cast a a a, a, um, a vote for Biden that I'm not enthusiastic about. That's uh, fine. Nobody needs you, know, you to be enthusiastic. We all just know that Trump is. But I, the I, who, whoever I vote for, I will vote for because I feel that it's uh, the best person for America and for all the inhabitants therein. Um, yeah. And you know, I don't believe in not voting, which is what I prefer to do. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But since I think that that's a cop out, uh, I'm going to vote, and it'll likely be for Biden Harris. They, no, I would say I think, ninety nine percent chance. But um, it's tough. Know. Yeah, I think it's tough arguing with people too, just because like, you know, and Dan, everything you're saying is reasonable, but I think you're kind of trying to be like some people look at it like objectively and are just like, 
or just look at it without emotion and then like, well, Trump and this. And then other people, I mean, me included, I truly do see Trump as the manifestation of everything evil in modern society. So like, it's hard to like have a calm argument sometimes because- I mean, I, I don't see him as evil as much as amoral. I think he's just without morals one way or the other. I mean, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> You know, um, I, I see him as a manifestation of everything, like all all the worst impulses of man. So then it's hard to like. So then I get angry when talking to someone because they're like, "Well, Trump said something," you know. Because I'm what, trying to call what, myself. What I find <laughs> crazy is, in, unless you're uh, like super duper rich, he can he pretty much ruins everybody's life. So that's where I'm confused and how he even has a base. You know what I mean? Because there's people voting against well, their interests. I think people vote against what they regard as a party that, well, first of all, there's people that just always vote Republican. They just feel that the Democrats are communists. They, you know, a lot of people have conspiracy theories. A lot which of is a lot of conspiracy. But by the way, I think it's glad, I'm really glad we have Biden now because even though I like Bernie, if Bernie was running now, I feel like we would be screwed in the sense that Trump is putting such a smear campaign on Biden as being a socialist Democrat, which he's not. Yeah, and, and it's I feel so far like, yeah. from, you're just like, okay. And I feel like he can like say that and be like on TV, like, do I look like a social Democrat? And obviously the Trump supporters won't buy it, but the independents will be like, obviously not falling for it. But well, if it was Bernie, I feel like they wouldn't, they would believe it. You well, know what's what I mean? so funny about it is I feel like he prepared a smear campaign for, for Bernie. Bernie. Yeah, and yeah, then okay. he was like, can we still use these phrases? Because I really like them. It's like <laughs> a roast. It's like a roast battle. But like you found out you're roasting someone else at the last yeah, second. Yeah, the day before the taping, they're it's just like, like it's hey, like a, yeah. John, Travolta, John Travolta dropped out, but we um, have uh, Lady Gaga. It's like, okay. Lady Gaga, you sucked in face off. Just <laughs> yes. Run with it. Just run with it. Exactly. I want to take your face off. Uh, um, <laughs> I think a lot, are react, a lot of people are reacting. A lot of people reacting against, um, you know, when you see when you see rioting and you see people yelling. Uh, as I saw one clip, I don't know how, how frequent this happened, but people yelling uh, like "Death to America." You know, you you when you see people going after statues, not necessarily the Confederacy, which most people are okay with, but even people going after statues of Washington and Jefferson, or or saying that, you know, a statue of uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt was inappropriate. You see, uh, it's perceived as the left really going after American history and a lot of people, that's- I get it, I think that's- That's not, I, that's not gonna play. I personally you know? think that is stupid and Biden obviously, again, I think it's- Now stupid. Biden isn't necessarily on board with that, but that's the left and he's tarred with that brush. That's well, not the whole left, that's some- No, but it's enough of the left that people, people get, that's what people are reacting against. Well, it's not, I mean, the fact that Biden had the majority of the vote in the primary shows that the majority of the voters aren't far left. You know what I mean? Well, like, that's, so, like, right, but I'm saying what, what, what motivates somebody to vote for Trump? And I think at least in part, it's, it's when they perceive the left as anti-America and, and rejecting the very, you know, when we grew up, I mean, now you're younger than me, but probably the same thing. You, but George Washington was a god, and you said the Pledge of Allegiance, and you stood up, and you know, and you heard the, the national anthem and all this, and it, it was a religion, you know. It is a religion. It's it a, is all about mythology. middle school, and then you start to have feelings, and you know, it's all but stupid. Just, but it's stupid. It's also stupid to like. I think it. I do think it misses the whatever. I think it misses the point to tear down, not like statues of non-Confederate statues. It just it just misses the point, and it is ammo. For the Republicans to use. Yeah, but I forget what some, somebody said this. They basically said the, the conservatives are for the most part all on the same page. And then the left is divided up 18 times. So well, there's these, yeah. So that's the biggest issue is that our side is just a bunch of people that got smashed together and we have to vote and try to agree on each, on things and we really don't. And then the conservatives are already on the same page. Well, and the that's where they're it's strength a cult. Is. I mean, it's a bit of a cult or it's a bit of a like, um, yeah, they, but they I think a lot it. of people. Right, a lot of the left, he's uh, Bernie's not sufficiently progressive. I'm sorry, um, uh, Biden. Biden is not sufficiently progressive, which is why a lot of them didn't vote for Hillary because they were mad about Bernie. I mean, I hate the far left. I truly do. I hate the far Nobody left. Nobody likes any extreme side. Nobody likes yeah. an extreme Extremes side. Are bad. Nobody far likes an extreme. Like but like well, yeah. that's what no. that's what pisses me off about this country is that. Nobody can just identify the extreme people and stop putting them with the rest. Exactly. You yeah. know, they say feminists are trash. 
nobody likes an extreme feminist. Everybody else is just looking for equal whites. And then there's just somebody being crazy over there. The same thing with extreme Muslims that are like our suicide bombers. But most are, it's just a religion. It's just how they feel about stuff. Don't glop. Same thing with protesters. Right. You look at people rioting. That's the extreme side. Everybody else is just marching. But wouldn't that also, wouldn't that logic also be for the cops too? Yes, but but the cops, the difference is, is the cops have put themselves in a bind that good cops get fired if they speak yeah. out. So you're either a cop that doesn't speak out or you're a bad cop. And right, and then there's no change. As opposed to where everybody else, because we're not unionized, because it doesn't have to do with our livelihood, a protester is doing it out of, you know, uh, 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 their their belief system a feminist is doing it out of their belief system a muslim is doing it out of their belief system these are choices as opposed to this is a job it is true yeah yeah their livelihood so i do think there are you know exceptional cops i think they're regular average cops that aren't being pieces of shit but they they become complicit or this because of the the penal the the penalty they get for speaking out here's what i i mean i agree i totally agree with that it's very well said i think i think for any group if you're looking at a pie graph, this is my theory. For any group, there are a small percentage who are psychopaths, a small percentage who are genuinely heroic, and then everyone in the middle who just is whatever the fuck is going to happen. They're just kind of malleable. And so like in any group, like the police, if it's systemically racist, the malleable people will fall into that line. And it's true for anything. I think, you know, there are some psychopaths, some really good people, and then everyone else just is whatever the country is going to you know, whatever the, whatever people are being pressured into being. It's like it's that, what that. was that, um, that, uh, they did it after, um, God, I can't think of words. Um, they basically, it was a, a study where they had people like Stanford. Oh no, the, not the Stanford prison experiment. The, uh, but you know where they would, zap was, yeah, yeah. They shot people. And they, people and and they, they yeah. basically said like, Hey, if they get it wrong, you shock them. And it was just actors, but they would do it. And the people would like freak out. And there's some people that are like, I can't do this. And they're like, no, it's fine. And there's other people that are like, okay. And they just kept doing yeah, most it. Most people fall in line. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, it was basically to show that like, yes, there were horrible Nazis and there were terrible people. And then there were also people that like, they literally showed up to work and just did what people told them to do. Which I don't think, that's why I don't think most Trump supporters are bad. I don't think so. I, oh, I, I don't I, think that at all. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of them are just kind of like, you know, some of them are voting for what they re- like. You know, if you're pro-life, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, if that's what you I think. I mean, you know? how do you vote pro-life when somebody's fucking done everything that he's done? Like that kind of hit. A, but I guess if you if you really think they're killing babies, abortion, you know, I don't know. I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying. If you if you think that if yeah, I agree with you. If you think that a fetus is a human life. And, and there are th- millions being killed a year, that to you would be a top But priority. why wouldn't you be as passionate about gun control? Why are you so- Well, if you had to weigh the- a, Literally a bean size thing that doesn't even have a, like anything to show for themselves yet, yet a human being that's lived- Well, alive, you're making, the, you're making the, the fallacy that they think guns, uh, gun control would stop killings. They don't yeah. think that. Well, that's true. Yeah, they think yeah. gun control saves lives in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's the fallacy. I mean, if it doesn't save. And I'm not agreeing with them. I'm just saying that's you know. Right. They, 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 they think. But then you're. But, but then they don't. Life. I mean, I, I just don't understand. Like, I don't understand how you can't believe in science, and then you also can't believe in statistics, and like it just. That's where it gets really frustrating. It's not, all, it's not all statistically based because some people believe that if the government ever became tyrannical you could use guns to protect yourself. And there's really no statistics on that, you know, because but nobody's trying to take your guns away. People are just having laws. No, but like, if I, I'm people saying people like in, in, fucking... in an abstract sense, if the government became tyrannical. Yeah, became... I, the government's tyrannical now. Like I, just... I, um, this is what I do. I get angry. I'm trying to calm down. I'm trying to be Zen during well, this, I, you, you know, know um, I think my I, therapist is a Trump supporter. I, I, I am approaching no. this person, but I, I, I would just, would say that again. I agree with Renan. Is that if you believe that millions of human lives are being taken every, that would be your top priority. That would be more important to you than. Oh, that being said, than they that really, a really believe people, that. I don't I know. Like, what they believe. I feel like I if they really, sure. really believe that. I talked. They... You know what? I I don't know. I I, you I think if they right. really, really believe that they're yeah. exact same as murdering babies. I think they would not stop at protesting. I think they just charge into all those buildings and burn them. You know what I mean? You, you may be right, and I've had that thought. 
Um, the chat is asking if Ranan could stop chewing. Uh, oh, oh shit! Chewing. I was gonna <laughs> say, yeah, I chewing. I thought he just had a lisp. <laughs> I have both. Okay. That's really that's actually genuinely very funny. I have a. Podcast. Have this been going on the whole time? I'm I thought sure. You talk funny. No, no, like, have you been hearing me chew this the whole time? Yeah, how do you not know how chewing works? God damn it. I, I thought you'd all say something. I mean, I, I just- I want to insult you. Yeah, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna say I love your life. chewing for 30 years? <laughs> but what I find interesting is that I think people have become more sensitive, and sorry for all the yelling, but um, I have a podcast with uh, Maria Shahada. You know Maria, Dan. I certainly do. She's the Egyptian girl you were speaking of earlier. Yes, that's my bestie. But I we, know uh, she's she, bestie, but I know who that is. Sure. She has uh, misophonia, which is like translates to the hatred of sounds. So like regular, like some basic sounds just send her into a rage. So she can't handle gum chewing. She can't handle uh, like pen clicking. Um, but a lot of people with misophonia can't handle chewing or people like, like people well, watching what do you mean you make... handle? She'll like freak out. She'll like, oh no. yeah, like the same way that like you would get murderous if somebody like, like, I don't know, like some dude off the street just like grabbed your fucking chest. You'd be like, what the fuck? Dude? Like that's how she feels when she sees somebody chewing gum. Does she do anything? No, because she's an adult and she okay. now wears noise canceling headphones. And if you're like all friend, the times, kind of or... almost all the time, yeah. Wow. She, yeah, like she, and what then a horrible it, city to live in. What's this? Uh, uh, she doesn't live here anymore. She lives in London, but she I haven't seen her in a long time. She's in London. So she, she was, um, she was only in New York for three years. Then she was in LA for eight. And now she's been in London for almost four. I was going to ask if you all could hear me chewing that. It doesn't even matter if you can hear it. It's just weird to watch somebody's mouth I know, move. Yeah, I know. Very it's just inappropriate and I'm disappointed in it. <laughs> I try not to uh, say things because, you know, as comedians, we've all gotten into trouble when we make assumptions. You know, I, I had an autistic kid at a show in uh, Jacksonville and he was making, he was interrupting and making noises. And I just thought he was fucking with me. And I, I kind of, I didn't snap at him, but I was a little, I was a little severe with him. And, uh, and then he's, his, his father said, I, he's autistic. And I felt horrible, but um, and after the show, I went over, I talked to him, I added him on Facebook. I did whatever I could do I to, know, to make it right. Him. But, uh, you know, yeah, kid. I paid his college tuition. But, was, he in the, uh, was he in the front row? Yeah, he was in the front row. What's, he doing, bringing the, what's he doing bringing his retarded son to the front oh, row? No, <laughs> no, you can't, you can't say that anymore. Right. Um, He's but, a nice kid. I just didn't realize he was autistic. No, so I'm saying I, a, maybe Renan had a problem. I don't want to make this No, I get that. My, my roommate has Tourette's, so I've become very... Like, I think when you start to learn more and more about stuff, you become more aware of it. So like, I've also had people shout out and I, I have gone like, hey man, do you have something going on with you or are you just drunk? And they'll be like, I'm just drunk. And I'll be like, okay, I can be a dick now. Okay, <laughs> like, so you know what I mean? Like, it, on. Do all your friends have a certain disorder? <laughs> oh yeah, I have tons of myself. You, you, disorder. I have a friend with epilepsy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I want, one time I, more, probably more than once I missed, misgendered somebody in the audience you know sometimes in the second row it's it, you know at the cellar for example you can't see that well yeah you might say so uh sir and it's a woman you know with short hair and uh, that's yeah but that's always much. usually that's always usually fun that's usually kind of a fun moment for well, at the i mean not for them but for everyone not else for them the no audience. now everybody usually that I don't think that's fun. I think especially nowadays with the gender is a, you know, a big topic and Yeah, I mean for me I always feel like if it, it everything is about intent. If I didn't intend to hurt you and then I and then I do my best to fix it, why would you continue to be mad when that wasn't my intent? And that's what I get right. upset about comedy. Like so I don't know if you guys experienced this. I've tweeted something that's a joke and people know it's a joke because I'm a comedian and you know, we don't have the inflection in a tweet, but then if it goes viral, if it starts to go outside, then you have people reading it like it's a fact. And then you have people like, this is trash. And I'll be like, hey, you can feel it's trash or not, but just so you know, I'm a comedian. They're like, that's not an excuse. I go, it's not an excuse. It's about intent. My intent was to make you laugh and to turn something dark into something light. But don't make me look like a psychopath, like I'm spewing this as facts when there's sarcasm involved or or tongue in cheek speak or whatever. Well, that's, yeah, that's yeah, that's a way to think. A tweet once it goes outside your circle, people oh, just treat it like it's a fact. Yeah. Oh, and it makes you crazy. Uh, and that's actually half the reason I hate putting stuff on Facebook because now Facebook it doesn't matter if you're a comic or not. People have been talking about their parents dying or you know pray for me. My grandmother's sick or blah blah uh, blah. Here's a GoFundMe, and it's not 
what it is anymore. It's 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 a place where people vent about sadness. And I can't I'm, wait till my mom dies. I can finally go viral on Twitter. Well, right? Insta- Instagram pretty much. at least is uh, is is still pretty light. You know, Instagram is where you go to to show off your new bathing suit or your kid or uh, through your dinner. You know. Post- Post cat pictures and it's but Twitter, yeah, Twitter's dark. Twitter Twitter's is just like, well, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter is about news and sadness yeah. and, and yelling. Like, my entire family died of COVID this morning. Please, be Twitter, careful. Is the, Twitter is share this and give me as many likes as possible. The only thing Twitter that could the most, Twitter is the most uh, vicious, and Instagram is the most lighthearted. And uh, no, TikTok's the most lighthearted. Okay, I don't, yeah, I don't fuck with TikTok, so I wouldn't know, but. TikTok is like people teaching you and like weird toilet paper challenges. It's okay. It's, so that's even and dancing and, and Facebook. Facebook is your grandma. Facebook, I think yeah, is in the middle. Facebook, there's some lighthearted stuff. There's some more serious stuff. I just miss it when it was all memes. I just, that's like almost how I, my language with my little brother is we just send weird memes. My favorite one, uh, the, uh, what's his name? Uh, you know, the, that actor, Morgan Freeman, when he goes like this. I'm sorry, like this, when he's pointing upward. Mm-hmm. And what, oh. but what do people, like, what are some People examples? use that when you say something they think is good and interesting, and then underneath it, they'll have Morgan Freeman with his finger pointing upwards. Like, that is good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've never understood me. But then there's the Kermit the Frog. What do you Frog mean you never understood me? You know? I don't know. I just, I find it weird when They're someone like, responds to me in a, with a meme. It's like the comic, it's like the comic, it's like the every man's comic strip. I, you know, I know, memes I thought were stupid at first, and... Memes and emojis, I said, well, here's something that's just of, of no value. They and it turns out I love life. them. I love to communicate in that way. I think it's fun and interesting and, and, and you know. Well, again, it gives you some intent. So like if I say I'm, I'm on my way, it could be excited, it could be a fact, it could just be you know informal, or it could be on my way and then like a bunch of emojis and you know I'm excited to see you. So to me, it's also like sometimes my boyfriend will text something to me and it'll have a smiley face and I'll be like, oh, I know to in, it, to interpret this with with humor. Uh, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. I do think the the smiley face and the frowny face and the LOL are important things for text because every text sounds really curt, and you need yeah. the smiley face and the sad face or the LOL to make sure what you're saying doesn't sound curt. Outside of that, I feel like I text with people and they give me that. Um, I'm only seeing girls do it, but it's the emoji of the woman shrugging. Yeah, I, I don't I find that necessary. Well, it's because they're confused <laughs> by you, and they're just like, I don't, I, Raina, I don't. Yeah, know I find them my, really because I get that when I ask them out. Ask, ask them out. Is that? And, they, and they go, they're like, I don't know what to say uh, to you because this is say. the Please fourth time you've asked me, and I said <laughs> the third. But, well, but it is. Yeah, they could send you the one with the eye roll with the. Mm-hmm. But I'm just, I'm just never like. I like the eye roll. I get a lot of use out of. Uh, I feel like it should just be smiley out. face, frowny face. You're an old soul, I think. And I, on I, someone's birthday, they're allowed one red balloon, but that's it. <laughs> well, I, I, you have I, become I, everybody's Jewish grandfather right there. You're just like that, yeah. one balloon is tasteful. Three balloons, what are we having? It's a- too much, yeah. It's just it's annoying. I just Children add flavor to a conversation, and it, it it may not be strictly necessary. Uh, or, or of any, necessary. You know. What about celebration? You guys are so boring. I love. I, I'm the one who said I that I like memes. this stuff. I love it, this shit. You know, I I, yeah. I I don't use a lot of memes, but I use a lot of emojis and some memes. And um, I like the gifts. The gifts the make gift. me. So I use a lot of gif, 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 gifs, whatever. gifs, whatever. Yeah, whatever I, it is, I, I use those. I guess I, I feel like it's a bit of a. It's a gif. It's You're a just bit not of a. It, I think it's a bit of a substitute for not having something. Interesting to say. Nothing. I, I'll say if I had a bad, maybe oh. if I had a. I was more erudite. I could write words, but there's nothing I can write that is going to equal the, uh, you know, the um, power of 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 a well placed gif. Well, you're obviously pretty uh, erudite. I, I like, you said the word erudite. Uh, like black guy leaning back with popcorn. You know. You know that one? Yeah. Like if somebody says something controversial on Facebook, and so there's a gif with the black guy leaning back. He's got the popcorn. I yeah. can't say anything that's going to make the point clearer than here we go. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Just so type it out. Just say out. right now, I feel like a black guy eating popcorn waiting for. <laughs> you know, yeah, I could I'm going to start that. doing that. I'm going to start just describing memes. You could just do that. Yeah. Or Kermit the Frog drinking tea. <laughs> It'll you know? make people. It'll make people think like my emoji thing is broken on my phone. I'll what just if- respond to things like. Um, 
Like, like uh, Morgan Freeman is looking upset right now. Morgan Freeman's pointing upwards. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or or um, Patrick Stewart is saying, Google it. That's going to be my new thing. I'm going to just start describing. And that's a funny bit, by the way. You know, if you want to do that on stage, I bet you get some laughs out of it. That, that's for you. <laughs> hey, you, you try said, that on stage, I bet you'll get some laughs out of it, huh? <laughs> you said that with such little facial expression that it almost needed a gift to show that you were being sarcastic. Well, I don't like to do that generally. Like, hey, that would be good on stage, yeah. you know? And, no, but, I but in this particular, it seemed like this, in this particular. No, no, I have the blessing just, of Dan Natterman. It, it, no, I appreciate it. At the, you just, a at the moment, you just sounded very much like a 50s character. Get some laughs out of it, kid. Well, I always sound that. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's very funny. I guess you always sound like that, but it really that's felt. That's sort of my thing, you know, me and John Mulaney. Now, I came first. Did he take it from you? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's possible. I think he just does it naturally, and I just do it naturally, and uh, and it just that just the uh, you know. You should start saying he stole it from you. It won't do any good if I. <laughs> but it'll be uh, funny videos. To be he took that fifty voice from me. You see, it was from me. I was the one who started that in comedy. I took it from Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> but uh, you I, brought I, it I don't in the stand up. You we should we should wrap up, guys. Do you, uh, uh, Raynon, Do you want to plug anything? Is there anything you want to make people do? Nah, it's just a, just a, oh, you know what? I actually I'm doing a Zoom. I'm doing a bi monthly, bisexual, bi monthly, whatever. Every two weeks, Zoom show uh, where I try out new material. It's every every Wednesday at eight p.m. starting on September sixteenth. That's a nice. long way away from here. So yeah, nice. Where would they find? Uh, Tickets. Oh, uh, um, on my website, ronanhirschberg.com or Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, Ron on Comedy, R A A N A N Comedy. You, go, you, you can, can follow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Dan? Well, Saturday in the park. No, not the Chicago song. This Saturday in the park, I'll be doing comedy by the oak tree in Sheep Meadow. I think we talked about the oak tree earlier. Find um, a little lunchbox. You can open like, it. What? You'll see. Um, you can just tell them at Stand Up New York has all the information. Yeah, Stand Up New York, and I also, you know, at Dan at Dan Natterman on all the social media, you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, come by the Oak Tree on Saturday at five, <laughs> and, five and six thirty. We're doing two shows Saturday. It sounds like you're weather permit, weather permitting. Huh? Which Oak Tree? Can you describe the Oak Tree? So Not really. It's a big oak. <laughs> Um, I have a free special called Self Help Me on YouTube. Um, I actually have two out of my three hours uh, free on YouTube. So Ooh. everything is at Liz Mealy. Um, I also have a Zoom show um, where me and a couple of comics like workshop new material. So that one is September 13th. I'm, it'll be Adam Ferrara and DC Benny. And we're all like telling new jokes and workshopping them and being stupid. And that's pay what you can and all the information is at lizmealy.com. But um, this is the Comedy Cellar uh, live stream. Uh, it's, I think, every night. I don't, I should I be a better host. Every night and mostly every night. Yeah. And we all must stand up uh, desperately. So everybody wear a mask. That's all I ask. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Monday, Monday through Thursday. Thank you for that correction. Monday through Thursday. I don't know. I'm a bad host. Thanks, Thanks guys. You all.